Now it's time to talk about your subject's response state of acceptance. Stay tuned for tip number 60. Welcome back to tip number 60 of 101 tips for interviewing and interrogation. This time we're going to talk about the response state of acceptance. Let's do a quick review. We mentioned that subjects can be either in reaction or response. A reaction to your dialogue, reaction to the evidence, a reaction to reality stops progress, reverses progress, or sidetracks your progress toward finding some type of resolution. Well, now we're in the response state of acceptance. In response, the subject's behavior, the, their dialogue, their mental state, their emotional state is all toward moving to some type of resolution, moving to some type of next step to handle or resolve the problem. So you'll hear the difference in the dialogue. So let's talk about the dialogue first. Now, there's this response state. The person is in that perfect balance of the sweet spot of cognitive and emotional. What that means that you as the interviewer have been very effective and ethical toward moving the subject from resistance behavior into response, from a reaction, which is withholding the progress, toward progress and response, toward some solution and fixing the problem. So you're at that point. Now, the key here is, is being able to see it and hear it and understand that you're at that point so you don't pass it by. I've seen numerous situations and cases that I've consulted on or reviewing video and audio. The subject is in that sweet spot, but the interviewer doesn't realize it and keeps on talking and will literally talk the subject out of talking. He, they stop them from making progress. Part of that is, is some of our uh, preconception and we want it to be just a specific way or if we're not in a narrative-based format, for example, accusatory style, we're driving so much and commanding the dialogue, we literally overrun the subject. So let's talk first about the verbal cues. Verbal cues of response in acceptance, at some point about how can we fix this or what's the next step forward, and it moves or progresses the conversation. For example, it might have something to do with the, with the punishment, the end game. How many years will this bring? Uh, are my parents going to hear about this? Will this be in the paper? Uh, I'd hate for my daddy to hear about this. Could I lose my scholarship? How much would the bond be? Which prison did they send you to? Did this bring some years? Could I lose my job? Uh, would this cost me my bond? Or will this affect my probation? You notice that they're looking for, will this decision I make, what is the gain versus pain outcome? Go back, look back several episodes and look for the title, gain versus pain. Your subject's evaluating what the return for their action will be. And to be effective, to keep them in response state, to move to a settlement, they need to figure they have to gain at least something or reduce, to some extent, the pain they will suffer. So you can't say to the subject, well, this year's going to be 25 years to life. You know, that's going to shut them down. In reality, you don't know, do you? What we need to do is to put it back in the subject's uh, realm. We'll come back to that in just a moment. It might be also a statement about, can I do something positive? Can I write them a letter? Can I pay it, pay it back? Do you think I could just apologize to them? Is there some kind of therapy I can go to? What if this was just an act? And so they're looking for what will the outcomes be? Now, you may also hear a third person remark. I didn't do it, but I tell you, I did it. Just get it over with. That's kind of a half sell. So you have to be careful with that. Um, I didn't do it, but I'll confess just to make you happy. Now, you're inclined to say no. If you say no, what do you do? You, just, you shut down the, re the response, correct? If you say yes, you say, I don't care, lie to me. Again, you want the subject to understand that the next step is theirs. You've guided them to that point, and then encourage them to make that move, which will affect them positively or remove some of the pain. But this has to be done ethically up to that point. Nothing to do with manipulation, nothing to do with coercion, as we talked about in the past where the subject, where you've lied to them, you've uh, forced your will on them based on your title or the threat, the only way they see progress is to um, give in to you to keep from having something worse to happen. You don't want that. That is where you've manipulated and there's an ethical issue there. It always needs to be in their frame of reference and to their best interest. And you've allowed them to dialogue back and forth with you. 
the person doesn't necessarily in the uh, nonverbal behavior have to have a complete collapse, like oh god, it's over, you know, and, and collapse and fall. Now some do, and you 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 see maybe the the chin drop into the chest. We we'll start working the point of the chin. I'll show you some still shots here. Uh, you can see the pain. You can see them drop. See the shoulders drop, and that's it's time for release. It's um, it's, it's like the, there's a, a like a final uh, type of thing. Okay, you may actually get that type of sigh. So it, one of the things we have to be careful of is to not misdiagnose depression as acceptance. Body language cues of those two look very, very similar. Look back a couple of episodes and review the depression reaction behavior we talked about. So it needs to be of movement forward where they feel they, they have a control or have some say in the outcome in which they see some benefit or advantage to them. When this happens, then you give a call to action. It's called CTA, call to action. It would be better if everybody heard your side of the story. I think it sounds like to me that you want to clear this up. I understand that you can want to get this behind you. I acknowledge that you're up, your, your position on this. I'm here with you to help you out. Uh, wouldn't it be better if everybody heard your side before the rumor started? Uh, people would be more uh, accepting if they understand the story from you instead of from somebody else. If you've came forward and so you're giving them the momentum, this is what you need to do next, but it is to their choice to do so. And you have effectively pulled them along the way, shown them the options, and they're making the choice. You can't get them to fall on the sword just to sacrifice themselves. And the response is not to satisfy you, not to make you happy. If you hear that from your subject, then you're not in a response behavior. You're still apparently they're perceiving some manipulation, something else going on. They must to see it for them. Think of it this way, with them, what's in it for me? That's what they're looking for. And that's the choice they'll make. Let's go back and take a look at all these reaction response behaviors, put them together, start reading them and watching them in your subject's behavior. And remember, what's my best practice here? Okay, because in, in acceptance, they're now acknowledging reality. And this is where you get the cooperation. You close the loop. The only way they have this information, they had to participate or were there or witness the event. Stay tuned for, for tip number 61. Meantime, be sure to take a look at the pocket guide. I have the whole section of the react response behaviors, how they're defined, cataloged, and best practices. It's your playbook that you might want to take a look at there on the website. Be sure to join us in one of our classes where we can go into great detail. And if you're looking for your agency for hosting a class on narrative-based interviewing, where the maximum return of information increased 60%, then give me a call. And let's see how we can help out your agency and your investigators. Until next time, for tip number 61, this is Stan Walters. Be safe.